All right, boys and girls, brace yourselves. Uh, it's something a little bit different. This one is quite detailed, but I really do think um, that this could potentially help some of you land some more carp off the top, which is probably your best bet in terms of what species to target when it's as hot as it's been. Yeah, not sure, all a bit technical. Like I said, brace yourself. Thanks for choosing to watch the video. As you can probably tell, it's boiling hot. We're having a lot of hot weather. And what I want to share with you in this one is my perfect self-hooking surface rig for big carp. And by self-hooking, I mean this. There we go. So hopefully, as you could see in that clip, that fish was, was pretty much hooked uh, before I even knew much about it. And I've been surface fishing for carp for a number of decades now. Um, and over that time, I've actually refined the components, you know, quite specific components, and how I arrange those to create what I think is the perfect sort of self-hooking style bolt rig. As my mate Matt Woods said recently in a podcast, and I totally agree with him, if you want to get good at catching big carp, at first, just get good at catching carp on sort of like, you know, moderate sort of lakes. If you get good at catching carp on those lakes and then just simply transfer those skills uh, to lakes that hold big carp. That's certainly what I feel I do with my floater fishing. I'm regularly going out on easy to moderate lakes, just sort of like, almost like practicing my craft, refining things, changing. You know, it's, you're only learning if you're catching a lot of the time, I think, you know. So get on somewhere where you're getting Get plenty of action and refine things down and find the perfect setup for you to go and take to a, a more challenging venue that's potentially got bigger fish and um, bigger rewards and that's exactly what I've done. Uh, I do it all the time with my float of fishing. The surface methods and the rigs that I'm going to go through in this in this uh, video I took um, to the Wolf and So reservoirs you know I've caught carp to over 35 pound from those resis which are quite big you know again off the top. Um, before then moving on to an Essex Syndicate, had a number of upper upper 30 commons uh, and then eventually hit the jackpot with a 41 pound 3 ounce common off the top on this sort of like bolt style surface method that I'm going to show you in the video. It's been boiling hot, some of the rivers are closed uh, because it's been so consistently hot so there's uh, no better time to actually get out there enjoy the sunshine and actually do some carp fishing on the surface so i'm a bit of a mess a bit hot and sweaty covered in fish slime because i've just had an absolutely magnificent common uh, i'm just fishing floaters on the top um, I'm going to quickly take you through the rig and everything before we have a look at a look at the fish that I had. What I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly show you through the outfit that sits in my car all the way from spring right the way through to autumn for this summer fishing. I just love floater fishing in the summer. It's one of my favourite ways to catch carp. I've got the 10 foot opportunist rod, 2.25 test curve, a 4,000 size axis reel. Um, I want to make sure that it's heavier than the hook length. You know, if I snap up, I want to make sure it's the hook length that goes. Onto the main line, I have got the surface bomb. I've got the larger size there. It's about three quarters full of water at the moment. Uh, I've got a swivel locked into it. I've then got a two foot length of 10 pound fluorocarbon coming down to a size 10 specimen hook and uh, trimmed down pop up on the hair. I've made sure that that pop up is really nice and snug to the hook. So that's a quick review of the rig, um, but I want to drill into it in detail, specifically around, you know, what components I'm using to create this bolt sort of self-hooking um, method. It's worth saying that this is a method for when you've got them going. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's not um, a surface rig for, rig for when you're stalking carp out the edge or anything like that. This is one where you've, you've been feeding them and you've got them pack manning, you know, and this is the rig that I would use to then to try and nail them in that kind of scenario. So I'm gonna go from top to bottom again, just in more detail. 
The controller. I like to use a heavy controller because I think this facilitates that bolt effect that we're talking about here. Um, this is a Corum surface bomb. Um, there's a number of different controllers on the market. All I would say is don't choose one based on how far you want to cast. Um, I just go in fairly heavy, you know. So whether it's these, whether it's the bolt machines, um, yeah, I'll, I'll go pretty large. Uh, with these ones, you fill them up with water. Uh, this is like about three quarters full at the moment of water. And that's just to, again, to make sure that it's heavy uh, and nothing to do with the uh, casting range. Um, so that's, that's my advice on the controller. The swivel in it, make sure it locks in there fairly solidly. Obviously we want it to be safe, so it needs to come out, but make sure that the, you know, that, that it is in there so that you do get that bolt. Then the hook length, coming down to the hook length, um, you know, don't get too hung up again on breaking strains. I would suggest you go with something that's around about 0.28 mil uh, in diameter. You know, anything thicker than that, I think it's starting to get a little bit too visible to the fish. Make sure that it floats. Um, I guess the talking point again is the length of it. You know, I've messed around with the length of this hook length so much, going right down to a foot in length and going up to about three foot in length. And I think I've arrived at the idea, which is about two foot long. Um, again, it means that when the fish takes that bait, they haven't got to move too much before they come in contact with the heavy controller that I'm using. Another thing to mention about the hook length is just make sure that you're greasing it. You know, grease it quite a lot with Vaseline uh, regularly. You know, the last thing, and I see it quite a lot, the last thing you want is for that hook length to sink. Especially if I've only got a two foot hit the hook length. If that starts to sink, then I really am gonna be way too close to the, to the, the bolt machine. And that's not that they won't take it when it's that close, but I'm not gonna get that bolt, am I? Because it's, it's now, I've got too much sag. So, Make sure that you're regularly putting on Vaseline uh, or wax or something like that up and down the hook length. And I even put some slightly above the controller as well, just to make sure that nothing's sinking. Coming down to the hook, uh, this is knotless knotted on. Um, and the main thing I would say about that hook for me, I've used a lot of different hooks for surface fishing. I find a size 10 is perfect for me. I've caught some very big fish, including that 41 on a size 10 hook. I think the main thing is not all size 10 hooks are the same. L look at the hook, make sure it's got a thick wire, make sure that you know that it's gonna be able to land a big fish. You know, you get some size 10 hooks that are weaker than others. So just make sure that it's a strong size 10 hook because that, that is quite small. I think one of the main things I wanna say about the hook is make sure that it's got a straight point. Um, I don't like to use beak points, either for zigs or, or surface fishing. And that is because remember, um, we haven't, you know, we're not fishing with the lead here. That, you know, you haven't got much of a bolt effect. You haven't got an awful lot of resistance. And I just think a straight point penetrates better uh, uh, with the low resistance uh, uh, of the controller. So yeah, a size 10 hook, nice thick wire on that hook make sure it's got a very sharp straight point. I've used a lot of different hooks in the Corum range for surface fishing. I've arrived on these specimen hooks in a size 10 for the reasons that I've mentioned. They're nice and strong and they've got a nice straight point. And finally, trim down pop-up. Um, it is really, really important that that pop-up is, is touching the bend of the hook. You know, if you've got too long a hair, this rig isn't gonna work. Make sure that, you know, when you're tying up the rig, what I do is that I put that trim down pop up on the hair first before I then knot the snot on the size 10 hook so that I can make sure that it's really, really tight to the bend um, and, and yeah, that'll facilitate uh, hooking up the fish. In terms of the trim down pop up that you use, I just try and sort of match it in terms of colour really. I wouldn't get too hung up on that. I do use the manilas quite a lot and trim them down to size, but I don't think it matters too much. Like I said, we're doing this in a situation where we've got the fish feeding. You know, they're competing with one another. Um, make sure that it, it's buoyant enough to sit where you need it to in the water. The last thing you want it to be doing is dropping too low in that surface film 
or even worse, sort of suspending just under it. You know, you do want it to be on the surface. So just make sure that the pop-ups that you choose are nice and buoyant and make sure that you don't trim too much off of them. Just make sure that you check it in the edge and that it's sitting on the surface exactly as you want it. What I'm doing is I'm just feeding mixers, quite a lot of them, fairly steadily with a throwing stick. Um, I always use a throwing stick. I've had enough of catapult elastics breaking on me. So put plenty of mixers in, wait for the fish to be competing for the, for the, um, for the mixers. Then I overcast it. You know, it's fairly standard floater stuff really. Overcast it, slowly draw it back into the fish. And uh, then I just let the surface bomb do the rest. So there you go, there's the setup and the rig that I'm using. Let's have a look at that fish now, shall we? Just had to be patient. Oh, up, 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 Don't you dare put your head down. And to keep the head up, it is common. Enjoying the sunshine and a bit of surface fishing in the net. <laughs> Sun's out and look at him, absolutely stunning on the surface bomb, fairly simple tactics. Um, next time the sun's out, make sure that you grab your surface bombs and get out there and have an amazing time catching fish like this, this absolutely immaculate common. Unreal. So there you go, there's my bolt style surface rig that I'll use right the way through the summer. I've had a series of really enjoyable sessions in the sunshine recently, catching plenty of carp of all sizes. It's such an effective and enjoyable way to catch carp in, in the summer months. If you've enjoyed the video and you found the tips useful, then please don't forget to like and subscribe and all that stuff. I've also been fishing the river quite a lot. Um, I've got really into my float fishing on the river. I haven't done a ton of float fishing on the river and I really want to master trotting. I've done a fair amount of it. I've caught a whole range of river fish, including some stunning barbel that I'm going to look forward to sharing with you very soon. Until then, enjoy the sunshine and be lucky.